to God. Let's honor the Lord's presence right now. Are you excited to worship the King of Kings? Amen. We serve the Lord of all glory. Amen. We're going to give him a praise and we pray that he will be glorified in our worship. Hallelujah. Glorious. Shout it out and glory. louder Jesus we shout your name Jesus we make your praise glorious you are
want to acknowledge your presence right now, God. Before we even have lyrics to sing, God, we just want to bless you with the fruit of our lips, God. Hallelujah. You are the Lord of glory. We thank you for revealing yourself to us, God, as a faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. And in a world with so many things, fire for our attention, our focus, and our affections. God, we just want to pledge our allegiance yes, to you above everything else, God. Yes, God. And everything else pale in importance compared to you, God, because you are our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. i 
times and in the hard times alike, Lord God. 
that you are always with us. We thank you for showing your faithfulness from one generation to the next. We thank you for not leaving us or forsaking us. We thank you for being faithful to your promise, faithful to your word, Lord God. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. And we sing great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Hallelujah. And all I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let's sing that together. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all I've needed, all I have needed, thy hands have If he's been faithful to you, just give him praise with your own words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your loving kindness is better than life. So will our lips glorify you. So will our lips speak in praise of you. So we will proclaim your goodness to the people around us, God, because you've been forever faithful. We thank you that you are with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise Hallelujah. God, praise God. He is forever faithful. Even when we are not faithful, he is faithful. And he will never leave us. He will never be away from us. In our best of a times and in our worst of times, God is there. So we give you praise this day. We give you praise. We give you praise for what you've done in the past for what you're doing now and your promises for what you will do. So we thank you and we give you praise. We can't thank you enough. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this family of God, for this body of believers, Lord. Everybody's going through difficult things and awesome and great things, Lord. But you're always there. You're always there. We remember those that are right now who need comforting, Lord, because they lost loved ones. Or they're going through difficulties. We lift up uh, Sister Lydia, Lord, who's having, she, her family is going through grieving and difficult times right now. We lift her up and pray for comfort. Your promise is that you would comfort us, that you'd send us a comforter, the Holy Spirit, Lord. So be with her and for anybody else who is going through difficult times. And for those that are hurting in their body, they have sickness or disease, you sent, gave us salvation, but you also gave us healing. There's healing in your word. And so we thank you for healing people. By faith, we all stand together and step out in faith and believe for healing to come to pass. And whatever situation anyone's going through, those that need employment, Lord, I pray, open the door. Open the door. Make a way. Find that those that are opening businesses, those that are stepping out in faith, those who are stepping out in new relationships, Lord. Whatever the situation, you are there. And we give you the praise for it, and we thank you. We thank you continually. Thanksgiving's not a day or a season. It's a lifestyle, and we thank you forevermore. Amen.
Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. We serve a mighty good God, and he is worthy of all of our praise. No matter what you're going through, he's still worthy. He does not become unworthy because we go through hard times. We serve a good God, and he is always worthy of our praise. Thanksgiving, as our brother Sam just said, Thanksgiving is more than one day in November. It is a lifestyle. Thanksgiving is thanks living. We praise God. Hallelujah. So the scripture that I wanted to share from today is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. Very familiar. You may not have known the address, but it simply says, In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. If you have ever wondered, what is God's will for my life? It's that you give him thanks in everything. And as we get in the habit of doing that, God will reveal his perfect plan to you. He will unfold himself to you in the midst of intimacy through difficult places. I thank God for the song, uh, Sister Carol Simbola from the great church in uh, New York. In everything, give him thanks. And I just want to share the lyrics with you. It's an old song, but it's a good song. In everything, give him thanks, give him thanks. And the chorus says, in the good times, praise his name. In the bad times, do the same. In everything, give the king of kings all the thanks. And then the verses say, with all the good things that had come his way, it's no wonder we could hear Job say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, I'll still give him thanks. But when the tables were all turned around and Job's world came crashing down, his faith in God caused Job to say, I'll still give him thanks. When trouble comes and there's no one around, Satan tries to tell you, that God's let you down. But through every dark hour, the best thing I found is to give God thanks. For he has never failed me yet. So why should I start now to worry or fret? In everything, I won't ever forget to give God the thanks. Beloved, that's my prayer, my desire, my hope for you, that in everything you learn how to give God thanks. I promise you, he will reveal himself to you in miraculous and marvelous ways. He will turn those dark hours into times of sweet intimacy with him. He will reveal himself to you. He will whisper secrets to you in those dark hours. Don't run away from the dark hours when things get difficult and when things get bad. That's when God will come in if we invite him. He will come into your circumstances and he will unfold rich treasures to you. My sister, whatever it is you're going through, God knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He wants to meet you and minister to you in a very special and intimate way. Our God is a loving God and we've got to learn how to make it a lifestyle to give him all the thanks. God bless you. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Good to be in worship on this Sunday morning, the Sunday morning after Thanksgiving of 2023. So glad to be in the house of the Lord on the Lord's day. No better place to be on the first day of the week than to give God all the praise in the midst of his people. So we welcome all of you who are here in person, and we welcome those of you who are joining us uh, by streaming wherever you are in the state, the country, or the world, we're so glad that you have counted this time worthy to give God all the praise. He is a good God. He's blessed you in so many ways. Blessed some of us too much. We ate too much last Thursday. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God is a good God, worthy of all of our 
praise. Well, listen, let me make sure you're, uh, you're welcome. If you are our first time guest with us, we're especially honored that you have uh, taken the time to come to be with us. You could have been many other places today that you chose to be with us is a great honor. So I want to acknowledge your presence. If you're a first time guest and you're here in the sanctuary, would you stand and just remain standing for a few moments? We want to give you something. Any first time guests, first time with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Please remain standing because our, our hospitality team wants to give you uh, a card. Now, what they just handed you is a card that you can use to go right across the corridor to the Destiny Cafe after this service is over where you um, will be treated to a beverage, hot or cold, of your choice and one of the snacks. You can get fruit. You can get a pastry. Um, it's, it's the destiny Starbucks back there, you know, and, uh, we want to say thank you by letting you, um, have at that as we just thank you for coming. So God bless you. You may be seated. Let's give them a hand one more time. Now, if you are with us online for the first time, you're a first time guest as well, though virtual. And we're just as excited that you've chosen to join us. You could have gone to all, everybody's church is online now. You could have gone anywhere in the world if you wanted to. That you chose to be with us is a great honor. Do me a favor as our first time guest online. You may not want to chat throughout the service. You're free to, but you know, your first time you say, well, I don't know these people. Well, do me a favor and just go in at least one time to let us know who you are. Say, my name is, and I. I'm watching or worshiping from, and then let us know where you are. Somebody online, my wife and some others are there, and they will make sure that you know you are just as welcome as these folks who have joined us here in person. May God bless you richly for doing that. All right, uh, well, let's get caught up on what's going on around here. First of all, uh, there was the recent graduation of people from the, uh, the class led by our associate pastor, uh, Kevin Lee. Come on up, sir. I want him to, um, to congratulate the folks who... Um, oh, they beating you to it. They showing the names. Y'all supposed to wait till he say something. All right, go ahead. Excellent. All right, I was supposed to intro that video. Um, well, um, Pastor, my Bible says that we are to be devoted to prayer, to be watchful and thankful. And so we just want to take a little spot just to thank all of our students who recently graduated from our Colossians class. Let's just give them another round of applause. Would you? Absolutely. And so we are, we're, uh, I'm working with Pastor to, to deliver some more courses, hopefully in the new year. Uh, those will be coming out um, hopefully soon to your, uh, make you aware of those classes. But uh, we are looking for more people to get involved, uh, members involved. And we had a good old time uh, digging into God's word uh, and watching God transform our lives in the midst too. So we hope you all will participate with us in the future. God bless. Amen. Thank you so much. Our School of Discipleship and Excellent Living is uh, somewhere where you can come and really not only learn the, the important truths of Scripture, but more importantly, how to live them out. We want to be intensely practical. We're not just about theology. We are about making sure that we turn what we believe into how we live. And to that end, we want to invite you in 2024, as you begin to see the classes offered, we're going to um, give Following Jesus 101, a course that I wrote years ago, decades ago, and I've just updated it more, but it gives you the basic ABCs of what it means to be a follower of Christ. I want to get more people, even if you've been in church a lot of, a lot of years, doesn't necessarily know that you're doesn't mean you're necessarily versed in the foundational truths of Scripture. You can go to church a long time and be biblically illiterate. Yes. You really can. And we want to make sure here at Destiny that is not the case. We want you to know what you believe and, and who it is you serve. So uh, we'll be very soon offering Following Jesus 101. Following Jesus 201 will be offered last next year. And, of course, Pastor Kevin will help us uh, to continue to have these other courses as well. First of all, by way of, um, of this upcoming week, we've got uh, WOD coming up Saturday. Saturday, Women of Destiny. 
Now, listen, sisters, that's not just for women who are part of this church by membership. You should be, and I want you to be. But even if you're not yet a member of Destiny, but you could use some fellowship with with women who are going somewhere good and godly, then we want you to join them virtually Saturday, 10 a.m., Uh, and uh, on Zoom, and you'll be blessed. You get to see the other folks, interact with them, and my wife and others will share with you some really important truths. So, sisters, Saturday at 10 a.m. is your day. The following Saturday, by the the way, brothers, is when we uh, regather, second Saturday. (laughs) But you all got to hold off for the ladies this week. So the ladies have the first Saturday, and then the brothers will come back. Uh, second Saturday. So sisters, now if you're not on the, on the uh, contact list, sisters, and you want the credentials, we don't put them out publicly because there are trolls out here. There are people who do nothing but disrupt uh, all online. And so we don't, we don't put out stuff for them to easily get access to. So if you want to go, just contact us directly through our website or uh, our email or phone line and say, I want to come to WOD. Please send me the credentials. Give us your email address. We'll get it right out to you. And all you got to do is show up on Zoom at 10 a.m. and the sisters will be there. Let me thank um, all of the Uh, the people who are part of our Destiny Cafe team and the others who assisted in helping us move the cafe last weekend to the Kingdom Life Center as we had a one-day preview. How many of you enjoyed just going in and previewing um, the space that we have built? And we are finalizing getting the last touches in place so that When the inspectors from the city of uh, Fremont uh, come to do the punch list, you got to go through a certain punch list before they will give you the occupancy permit, which means we can use it permanently and as often as we want to. So we've got a couple of weeks to to get some things together. And uh, before too long, I don't have a date yet, but before too long, we'll be able to announce the official opening of the Kingdom Life Center, and we will be able to utilize it every week and uh, as often during the week as we so choose as a ministry. But I want to thank you who helped uh, us put take the cafe over there. That was no easy job. And um, so I want to appreciate, I'll bet, I'll bet the cafe folks aren't in the room, but uh, would you help me thank them and all of the folks who helped us get the food down there, the carts down there, and, and all of that. Y'all, you all who couldn't do your espresso last week, you survived. Look at that. You actually made it through. I heard that because there's a special plug you got to have for espresso. I don't drink coffee. I know nothing about that stuff. They said, no, no, we don't. it's not a regular plug. It's a special plug, and they don't have it down there yet, so we're going to get the plug. So whenever we want to have espresso across the, oh, over there, we could do it. But, um, but the cafe is going to be relocated here. It's here today and here permanently, and if you want to, Go once we open up. You can take your food. You can either either fellowship here or you can go next door and take the food. But I appreciate. I tell you what, one of the hardest working ministry teams is one of the newest, which is the Destiny Cafe team. Those people go above and beyond, and we appreciate all of the people on our ministry teams. But I but they're the newest, so you want to make a special big deal over the newest people. And we appreciate um, uh, Sister Joy Washington and all of those who do what they do uh, to make that cafe so great. And we appreciate you. Uh, Let's see, what else is going on? Oh, I need to say that next week we want to start taking uh, baptism names. On New Year's Eve, watch night service, we always baptize. We say don't go into the next year without having followed Jesus in the act of water baptism. So if you are a believer and you haven't yet been baptized in Jesus' name, head for the water. <laughs> so you can say, I followed Christ in water baptism. He is the one who commanded us to baptize those who follow him. So we gladly and cheerfully do that here at Destiny. And one of the times we do it every year is during our watch night service. So if you're not yet baptized, we want you to get baptized. Uh, And next week, beginning next Sunday, we're going to follow up and um, make sure that that list is populated. Yes, sir. 
I just got some information I wanted to share with y'all. This is breaking news. Um, real important that I share this moment. But this coming Wednesday, somebody turns 66 years old, and that's our senior pastor, Paul Shepard. <laughs> Come on, stand up on your feet, everybody. <laughs> I drew, I drew the, the short straw, so I decided to come up and let y'all know that. But let's make sure we love on Pastor. Let's say I'm just going to go off the cuff. Next Sunday, make sure you bring a card or something nice and just love on him real good. And uh, let's celebrate Pastor throughout this week, all right? Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I hadn't thought about it. When I saw him standing there with a microphone, I said, Lord, somebody died. What was I'm thinking something, oh, my God, we about to go into fasting and prayer. And, oh, no, that's just the pastor getting old. That's all. But uh, I'm, I'm so grateful to pastor a loving church, and I appreciate your thoughtfulness throughout the year. And that, yep, about to turn two sixes. This is crazy. When I came to California, I was 31 years old. 31. I'm like, what happened? I, I used to be young. When I got here, they said, look at this young man going to lead the church. I would do youth revivals. They haven't asked me to do a youth revival in 30, 35 years. But uh, I'm glad to be the senior pastor of a loving church, and I appreciate you all so, so, so very much. So again, if you need to be, if you haven't followed Christ in water baptism uh, by all means, we want to baptize you this New Year's Eve. So starting next Sunday, we'll sign up and create that list. And we do that as one of the things we do prior to midnight when we uh, give God praise and go into the new year that he is blessing us to see. All right? I believe that's everything I've got to catch you up on. If there's anything else, I'll mention it later. Let's give the Lord his tithes and offerings. Thank you, Destiny, for being such a generous church. And because of your generosity, we're able to do all that we're doing, not only here locally, but regionally, nationally, and internationally. We really are uh, changing lives in so many places because of your generosity, and we appreciate you so much. So you see on the screen how you can give. If you're here in person and want to give a live uh, check or cash, put it in one of the envelopes. You'll see them in the seat pockets in front of you. And um, you can use one of the tithing offering boxes anywhere in the building. We have four of them in the sanctuary, one across the corridor in Barker Hall, one in the main lobby, one in the children's lobby. Wherever you see the tithing offering box, you can leave that gift, and we are grateful for it. Others of us, most of us give online. Over 90% of the tithes and offerings uh, given to Destiny are given online. We appreciate that. Some give through the mail as well. And appreciate you thinking of us as you go into the holidays. Don't, it's Jesus' birthday. Don't leave him out. Don't get all these other raggedy folk. And then you, <laughs> I'm just trying to help you now, trying to help you be blessed. Don't, don't ignore Jesus. It's his birthday, you know. And uh, make sure that you're, that you're worshiping through giving. But our, I, I just joke when I say that because our people are very generous. Let's stand and give the Lord... Uh, praise as we offer to him these tithes and offerings. We'll take just a couple of moments to meet and greet one another. I want to say hello to the folks online, my wife and I. Then we'll be back. i got a word I want to share with you, and we'll let you get on with the rest of your day. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to worship you. We worship you even as we give because you are the supplier, the giver of everything good. And out of what is yours, we cheerfully give these generous tithes and offerings. Pray that you bless both gift and giver. Thank you that we're living under an open heaven as we follow your word because you promised that if we would bring these tithes and offerings into the storehouse, you would open up the window of heaven, pour out a blessing we wouldn't even have room enough to receive. And we know that you're blessing us not only financially, you're blessing us in ways that money cannot buy. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a moment and meet and greet a few folks.
bless you to all of our online visitors, worshipers, friends, and members. I hope you all enjoyed a wonderful Thanksgiving, those who are here in the United States. And for all of you, Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving. We thank God that we can make a habit out of thanking him. It is his will for us. And we just want to thank you for taking the time to join us in worship. We pray that you enjoy the remainder of the service and that you have a blessed and thankful week. Hey everybody, it's good to be with you virtually again. I appreciate our online congregation so much. We appreciate the fact that you are active in your worship, you're active in your giving, you're active in being part of this church family. Let me say, as you just heard me announce, we're gonna baptize uh, New Year's Eve. If you wanna be baptized, in fact, if it's possible for you to make the trip if you're out of the region, you can do what one of our online members, one of our distant members did this past Easter. She flew across the country. She lives in Delaware, came across the country to be baptized on Easter Sunday morning. So consider that if you can come, we'd love to baptize you and meet you in person, but wherever you are, we welcome you. Thank God for the Destiny family that is becoming more and more uh, global as well as regional. God bless you. We love you. If we can do anything to bless you, contact us. We would love to be part of your continued journey with Christ. God bless you. We love you. seats. You tell them to rest after service in the cafe. It was good to uh, have you all who are here in person meet our director of Destiny Global, uh, Lynette Crute, last week. And um, I want to encourage all of our members who are distant, please be sure to let her team be in touch with you because we don't want members who are just members in name. We want you to be an active part of the fellowship. And so uh, Lynette is, has uh, a team that she's pulling together and they want to be active in being in touch with you. And please uh, allow them to, to, to do that by your continued participation. But we're so grateful for her being part of the Destiny uh, staff now as she's helping us to shepherd uh, the global team. All right, let's get into the word of God. If you have your Bible, go with me to Joshua chapter 1, very familiar passage of scripture. And I want to look again at the first six verses. I've preached over the years um, about uh, this passage, and I just want to uh, revisit it now. Um, next Sunday, I'm going to get into an Advent message, start talking about Jesus uh, throughout the four Sundays of December. But um, I want to do one more individual message before I do that. I preached this this past Tuesday night. As I mentioned last Sunday, I would do uh, up at Mount Calvary in Fairfield. And I told you I, um, you didn't have to meet me up there because I was going to preach it here at home. When, when you got a good meal, you want to share it at home and not just take it out. And this is a, a rhema word that I think will be a blessing to you. Joshua chapter 1 beginning with verses 1 and continuing through verse 6. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. I want to talk to you um, from the subject RSVP for the next level. If you want to go to the next level in some area of your life, there are some principles found in these six verses we just read that will help you get there. And so I've entitled this RSVP for the next level uh, because here's the premise of what I want to share with you. Just because it is possible for you to go to the next level in this area, whatever area you're thinking about in your life, doesn't mean you're automatically going to do that. And just because God wants you to go doesn't mean you're going to do that. I am a teacher in the body of Christ and, um, you know, preacher slash teacher. And, and really when it comes to preaching versus teaching, there's not a lot of difference. It's just that more an emphasis. The teaching gift focuses more on being instructive and the preaching gift tends to focus more on being um, Um, proclaiming. But the reality is every good teacher is going to proclaim and every good preacher is going to teach. So so it doesn't matter. Some folk, it really kind of boils down to some for, to some folk, uh, the the style or even the volume, if you get loud enough, they say, you preaching. <laughs> and if you don't get loud, too loud, oh, he teaching. Well, no, <laughs> it's not that simple. A good teacher is going to proclaim while they instruct. A good preacher is going to instruct while he proclaims. And so I, but my gifting, my core gifting is teaching. Te- to teach is to cause to learn. That's what it means, to cause to learn. I'm not teaching if you're not learning. My job as a teacher is to do permanent damage to ignorance. You're not supposed to come to this church and not know stuff. Woo, he tore it up. What are you talking about? I don't know, but he was, Lord, that man preached. You know that happens in some churches. Oh, boy, he walked that place. Oh, good. What are you talking about? I don't remember, but I'll tell you what. Well, if you didn't remember, then they, they wasted your time. You got some inspiration, good. Inspiration's good. We could all use inspiration. But you ought to know something about why you're inspired. And so my job is to do permanent damage to ignorance. And I want to let you know, just because God has willed it for you doesn't mean it's going to happen in your life. There's a whole lot of theology out here that is not according to truth. There are a lot of people who will teach you it's just, it's just going to happen. No, it's not going to just happen. You get nowhere good by accident. There, I know a lot of folk who have a PhD, a, a various earned doctorates. Not a one of them say, you know what? I woke up, had a PhD. <laughs> I can't believe it. I woke up, I graduated from, from uh, divinity school. I graduated from business school, whatever. I just, look, look at this degree. Nobody does that. If you get anywhere good, it's because you intended to. And I'm here to tell you, if you want to go to the, R, to, to the next level, you have to RSVP for it. You have to, now RSVP, that's a French term. In English, it means respond if you please. You, all of us have gotten RSVPs to some event, some party, some reception, and we got it in the mail, and they said, please respond by, and even gave you a deadline. Now, come on, don't, don't y'all front on me. How many of you all had got an, got an RSVP to something you said you wanted to go to, and you never got around to sending it in? Let me see some honest hands. Thank you for the honesty. Pray for the liars sitting down there. <laughs> Yes, some of us have done that quite a bit. I forgot to send it in. You still want to go. You call them up, is it too late? Because <laughs> you want to go to whatever that event is. Well, talking about the next level, a whole lot of folks say they want to go to the next level. And I'm telling you, God says you can go, but you're not going to go by accident. You're going to have to, to request respond and say, yes, I want what God wants for me. And when I think of the next level and the principles here, I'm thinking of uh, all kinds of areas. Certainly the spiritual uh, area of your life is important, but I talk uh, often about the seven pillars that our lives are based on. So not only spiritual, but relationships, 
Take your relationships to the next level. Financially, God knows some of us need to take our money to the next level. Vocationally, take your job and your career to the next level. Educationally, take what you're training your mind to do to the next level. Physically, some of us need to get it together. We just ate a whole bunch of food. We, <laughs> we need to pull it back together. Pull it on back together. Oh, I don't want to go to the next level in the wrong direction when it comes to fig. You can go to the next level to a place you don't want to go. Some of us want to go to the next, next level of weight loss, of, of recapturing some things. And you can go. And emotionally, the next level emotionally, some of us need to get our heads together. It's time for us to get our heads straight. Just because you saved doesn't mean you got your head straight. Salvation gets your heart straight. But you need some help sometime getting your head straight. You're thinking wrong. You're, you're behaving wrong because actions start with thoughts. You sow a thought, then you reap an action. You sow an action, then you reap a habit. You sow a habit, and you reap a lifestyle. So it starts with your thoughts. And some of us got to get our heads together. We say, but some of us a little bit cray, and we need to get ourselves. Come on, let me, let me just help you. Just be real. That's why we got, we're building next door that Kingdom Life Center. We got places you can go. Folk can help you get straight. If you can't come in person, they will do a Zoom uh, uh, appointment with you. Because I'm serious. I don't want to pass the folk who say, but a little bit off. <laughs> we all start out off, but you, you're not supposed to stay there. We, come on now, it's all right to be not all right as long as you know you're not all right and you want to get right. Then let somebody help you get right. So in all those areas of your life, God wants to take you to the next level. He wants to bless you, but it's up to you to respond correctly. So I want to give you three principles in the in 30 some minutes here. I want to give you three principles that'll help you if you apply them to any of these areas, they'll help you. The first is the desire principle. The desire principle. Three principles for going to the next level. The first is the desire principle. This answers the question, how badly do you want it? See, a lot of folks say they want to change, but they don't want it badly enough to do what it takes to change. It starts with a desire. I got to not only say I want it in my heart, I got to actually want it and so that I can be motivated to move in that direction. Now, I use Joshua as the jumping off point for these principles because Joshua is leading a generation of people who were raised by folk who said they wanted to go somewhere until they found out what it was going to cost them to get there. You know that the Moses generation preceded the Joshua generation. Moses led people who were successful in getting out of slavery. But really, come to think of it, they didn't have to do that much. All they had to do was let God do what he was doing through the leadership of Moses. You know the story. I don't have time to rehearse it, but you've read the book of Exodus. God raised up Moses who didn't even feel like he was qualified. He said, I can't talk. I got this bad stutter. I am, I am halted in speech and I just can't do it. God said, that's all right. Take your brother with you. He can say everything you want to say. God will accommodate you sometimes, even though he's called you to be something and God accommodated him and so he took his brother went to Pharaoh and said God said let my people go Pharaoh said well I don't know your God and get out of my face and you know the story it took all of this effort for God to show Pharaoh who he was now let me help you understand something in terms of theology and biblical history it's not so much that God was showing Pharaoh who he was God was showing all of us down through the generations and the the centuries who he is. Why? Because Pharaoh actually at times was kind of thinking about letting them go and the Bible says God would harden his heart. God hardened his heart to push up against them because God wanted us to know down through the centuries it doesn't matter who's in charge. If my plan has something to do with your life, I can push past anything standing against you so that you can experience what I have in mind for you. 
And so Moses led these people. After a while, Pharaoh said, I give up. All right, y'all, go ahead. And you know the story. God blessed them so miraculously that they left with wealth. They didn't just leave Egypt. They left with wealth. Them people were carrying stuff out. And they had the wealth of Egypt that they were taking with them. And we're not talking about a handful of people. We're talking about two million folks who went out of Egypt and God said, I've destined them for the promised land. And God so, so blessed them that he opened up a highway in the middle of the sea. And you know the Red Sea was parted and two million people went through on dry land got over to the other side and God brought the waters back together and God was showing them this is the God who has promised you, Israel, that you cannot be held in slavery because I have called you by my name and you are free. Now, here's the problem. God pronounced their freedom, and all they had to do was follow him out of bondage into freedom. Just like God has announced us save, all we had to do was confess Christ as our Savior. We went from being sinners to being saints of God. Do you know you are a saint with your imperfect self? Because Jesus has given you his righteousness, imputed it to your life, and you now are a child of God. Though you still got some stuff to work through, you're a child of God. So we've all made that journey from Egypt to, to uh, freedom. We've made it from, in our lives, from sin into salvation. But now the next step is God didn't just save you to take you to heaven. He wants to bless you here before he takes you to live with him. And so the question is, once they get to the, to the wilderness, what do they do? And you know the story. Moses sent 12 spies, one from each tribe, over to the promised land to let them preview the promised land and come back with a report because these are church folk in the Old Testament. Church folk love to have business meetings. And so... <laughs> And so Moses said, all right, we're going to send them over. They're going to come back and they're going to lead a business meeting. And you all will all hear how wonderful what God has promised us is and we'll all be ready to go. When they got back, you read about it in Numbers chapter 13. When they got back, 10 of the 12 spies had a different report than Moses hoped they would have. Moses hoped this would inspire the people to say, wow, then let's go. Instead, 10 of them came back. In fact, let me read it to you. Numbers chapter 26, 13, beginning at verse 26. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. Then they, there they reported to them and to the whole assembly, showed them the fruit of the land. They brought back, one passage tells you they brought back a vine of grapes that was so rich it took two men to carry one vine of grapes. It was amazing. And so here's the report, verse 27. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. It is just like you said, Moses. It is wonderful over there. Land flowing with milk and honey. Look at this. Look at this vine of grapes. It is amazing over there. Here is the fruit. First word of verse 28. But they just went and saw a land God promised them. He didn't say it's the maybe land. He didn't say it's the could be land. He didn't say if, if all the ducks fall in a row, I'm working on something. I'm trying to pull some things together. If I can get this all straight. That's not God. That's your uncle. You had, uh, some of y'all had uncles who talked like that, always had pipe dreams. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm working on something. That's not God, that's your uncle. God said, I promised this to Abraham and his descendants. I made a promise. When God makes a promise, he's not trying to pull something off. And despite them having stepped over there and seen the promised land, they come back talking about but. So let me tell you something. The proof that you are following the desire principle is you are willing to get your butt out of the way. 
Now, lest you think I was crude, I don't believe that man stood up there in the pulpit. See, your problem is you think I said another but. The but I just pointed out from the scriptures has one T. The one you're thinking about has two T's. I'm not talking about that one. That's yours. You work with it. You do with it whatever you want. They come in different sizes, shapes, and all that. That's yours. I'm, I got nothing to say about that. You just, you, you work on that yourself. I'm saying the one T, but if you plan to get where God's taking you spiritually, relationally, in any of these areas, you're going to have to get your B-U-T out of the way. You're going to have to get your negative conjunction out of the way. You're going to have to remember what your kids and grandkids were watching back in the day on TV. Conjunction, junction. What's your function? Y'all remember them sitting up there Saturday morning with high water pajamas on. What's your function? Listen, listen. We got nothing to do with that. If you are going to go somewhere, quit telling God but. You got to have the desire to push past your feelings. They got over there and they saw the opportunity, but they focused on the obstacle. The opportunity was land flowing with milk and honey, rich fruit, wonderful, sprawling land. Wow, this is amazing. They saw that, but then they focused on, but there are giants over there. There are walled cities over there. Compared to us, we look, compared to those folk, we look like a bunch of grasshoppers. Let me ask you a question. How do they know what they look like to the giants? None of them interviewed a giant. None of them said, pardon me, Mr. Giant, can you kindly describe what I look like to you? None of them said that. But when you focus on something God told you not to focus on, then what you do is you make large the problem and you shrink your God based on your feelings. And you're going to have to get that butt out the way. Now, you got to understand something. The Bible doesn't promise you. A lot of folks, again, say, oh, everything. That, here's one of, the, one of the sayings. Everything that God uh, will for me is for me. That's true. But the assumption is not Therefore, I'm going to get it. Whatever God has for you is for you, and you may get it. But that's up to you. Let me prove it to you in the scripture. 2 Corinthians 1.20, one of the most misunderstood verses in 2 Corinthians in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 1.20, and you hear people sum it up this way. Well, you know, the Bible says all the promises of God are yea and amen. <laughs> I came to correct you. I'm a teacher in the body of Christ. The Bible doesn't say the promises of God are yea and amen. Uh Uh-uh, I got it right in the Bible. Let me help you understand what it actually says. NIV, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Or yea, if you like yea, sound more spiritual. They are yea in Christ. (laughs) All right, so all the promises are yes or yea. In other words, when God makes your promise, he stamps it. Yes, I have that for you. Yes, I've ordained that for you. Yes, I put that in your purpose, in your destiny. That is yours to claim. Look at the next sentence. And so through him, through Christ, the amen is spoken by who? By us to the glory of God. So the promises of God are not yea and amen. The promises of God are yea. The amen is up to you. God says, I want to bless you spiritually. Yes, I've ordained you to be blessed spiritually. You have to say, amen. I'm going to do what it takes to walk with you into those blessings. God said, I want to bless your relationships. I don't want you having all these crazy, dysfunctional, toxic relationships. You're my child. Yes, I want you to have clear relationships. He says, yes, you have to say, amen. He says that about physically, educationally, social, and all the other areas of your life, all the pillars. You, God, you have a bunch of yeses from God in those areas. But it's up to you to say the amen. Amen means so let it be. 
Come on, God, I'm a partner with you. We're going to get this done. You and I make a majority. We're going to make this happen. So how badly do you want it? The desire principle stands firmly between you and God's will for your life. Do you want it enough to do whatever it takes to get there? Don't tell God, yes, I love your promises. Don't claim promises without being ready to say amen. Okay, God, I'm your partner. You, tell, you lead, I'm going to follow you. It will not, don't, don't believe in silver platterology. It will not just fall into your lap. Oh, God, look at all these blessings God just gave me. He's got them for you, but many of your blessings are conditional. You've got to do something. So the first generation, they messed around and focused on that but, and that but single-handedly kept them in the wilderness for 40 years. God called, when you read Numbers 14, the next chapter, it's, it's almost comical. God calls Moses on the carpet, says, tell those folk down there having that business meeting that they can stop wondering, are they going? I'm so offended by them putting that problem and the promise the, and, the, and the giants and the walled cities up against who I, when their parents just came, that just came across the, the, the Red Sea, them and their kids, I am not going to take them kicking and screaming into the promises. So tell them they can stay right here. They love the wilderness. This is where they're going to die. And they did. A whole generation died in the wilderness in the desert, though God had milk and honey ready for them. You can do it too. I came to just caution you. You can be saved and die in a wilderness. You save, you're going to heaven, but you're going to heaven from a wilderness. You're going to heaven from mediocrity. You're going to heaven from, you know, no big deal. Because you couldn't claim what God had promised you. So you got to get your desires right. I love hymns. I grew up in a hymn singing church. You've heard me tell it before. I love the hymns. I'm never going to get rid of the hymns. Just never going to do it. One of the hymns said, my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. The chorus said, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Anybody want to go higher than you are now? I want to go higher. I want to see more. I want to see the purpose of God fulfilled in my life in good measure. I don't want to leave any unclaimed blessings here. I want to claim everything he, he got. If the blood of Jesus purchased it, I want it. I want it. I don't want to be a will. And that's how Joshua got raised up because the kids of these folk who focused on but, their kids grew up, and so Joshua now has to lead them. And these kids, I love the fact that the younger generation, after the, those other people missed their blessing, they said, y'all said God is so great. If he's so great, why am I living in a desert? See, I, sometimes kids are just, just shoot straight. Y'all said God is so great, then how come we don't have anything? How come we're not, how come we're, we're broke, busted, disgusted? Why, why are we living in this mediocrity when we say we serve a God of excellence? What is this about? And so they grew up saying, Joshua, we're ready to go. And so the first thing is these folk had a desire. God raised up Joshua to lead people who had a desire. The second principle is not only the desire principle, but the departure principle. Look at verses 1 and 2. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then all you all, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. Notice it. Moses, my servant, is dead. Good man. Let them out of, the, out of bondage. Let them through the Red Sea. God used them to work miracle after miracle to confront uh, Pharaoh. All of that. Moses was a great 
influence a great servant of God. He's now dead. What do you do when something good dies? There are two things you always should do when good things die in your life. First thing is to honor them. And the first generation did a good job of honoring him. The Bible tells you in the book of Deuteronomy that they took 30 days and did nothing but mourn, nothing but cry, nothing but reflect, nothing but mourn. They didn't go anywhere. They didn't do anything. They just took a full month to just, just mourn the loss of their leader. I want to believe that destiny would do that, but I'm not quite so sure. So I'm just going to leave it alone. And just leave that in my own head, in my imagination. Oh, my Lord, they're going to be messed up for a solid month. Oh, they're not going to be able to do anything. You can believe that if you want to. I want to tell somebody else, if, you're, if your ego is messing with you and you think you're going to be all that, these folk going to show you otherwise. Oh, Lord, he gone. Oh, my God. They might get a little bit of tears, a little bit of crying at the funeral. All that, I do want some tears. Don't you all have a dry funeral now? And just, I want some tears somewhere along the line. I want worship and celebration, yeah, because where I am is a celebration. But y'all not there yet. So while I'm celebrating, y'all, y'all do a combination of celebration and mourning. That's all. That's what I want. A little bit of mourning going in. And some of y'all that work me real hard, I want you to mourn a lot. All right, but now, now that that's out the way, let me keep on with my point. So my point is, after something good dies, you should honor it, but number two, you should bury it. Don't keep above ground what is done. Don't take something that served its purpose and try to keep it alive. Moses is dead. The only way you're going to get to your next level is you got to be willing to let go of the current level. You cannot stay in the current level and go to the next level at the same time. You have to be willing to let some things go. They were good, but let them go. Take the inspiration. Take what you learn. Don't let the memories ever die. Keep the memories alive, but take the inspiration to the next level. You don't honor me by saying, oh, we, we want to do everything the way it used to be done. No, next level means some things have to progress. <laughs> Moses is dead. Now you and all these people get ready to cross. Crossing is not always easy. Sometimes crossing hurts. Sometimes crossing is difficult. But you got to be willing to cross. Why? Because I'm going somewhere. I, God is taking me somewhere. I can't stay where I am and get there at the same time. You can never be who you are and who God wants you to be at the same time. You're going to have to be willing to leave behind what is in order to move into what shall be. <laughs> Moses, my servant, is dead. Honor him, but bury him and let him go. Some of us have some, some fantasies we got to let go of. You got to let go of some things. You've been, this, I've been wanting this and wanting this. At a certain point, you realize, well, it's not happening. And if it happens, it's going to happen while I'm in the course of going to my next level. I want to tell all you singles, quit waiting for somebody to, to live your life. Quit waiting for somebody to show. As soon as they show up, oh, man, I'm going oh, to do some stuff. Quit threatening to live. <laughs> live your life right now with no ring on the finger, with none of that. Live your life. If somebody meets you, let them meet you in the course of living your life. I've told you all over the generations that bears repeating now, do not be Debbie Boone. In 1977, I was an organist. I was a pianist. I played for a lot of people's weddings because I could play good. You know, a lot of church folk, a lot of church folk, when they play, even if they play at a wedding, it sounds like church. I never liked that. If it's a wedding, I want to sound. I want to sound like I'm playing love songs, and that's what I did. And I did it good. And people all over the city of Philadelphia had me come play for their weddings, and they would do all the love songs that were current. Well, back in '77, Debbie Boone came out with a song called "You Light Up My Life." I played that for a whole bunch of weddings, and I'm glad I gave them what they wanted. Now that I'm an old man, I can tell you what I think. That's the dumbest song I ever heard in my life. 
stupid song. So many nights I'd sit by my window <laughs> waiting for someone to sing me his song. What you doing? <laughs> Sitting by a window of your life. There you are in your, your life is a house. You sitting by the window looking out, waiting for somebody to come by and when they see you in the window, they stop and start singing. What's the matter with you? Waiting for somebody to sing me his song. And then it gets worse. So many dreams I kept deep inside me. What? Why are your dreams inside you? Dreams mean nothing inside you. Dreams have to be lived. Dreams have to be walked toward. Dreams have to be invested in. Dreams are for you to bring to fruition. Dreams kept deep as I got some dreams. Soon as he come, I'm going to show him these dreams and he and I going to live these out. No, no, you need to be living your dreams. If bro man come, he need to see you in the midst of living your life, fulfilling your dreams. You ought to be living such an intriguing life. My man say, girl, what you doing? Come on, let me talk to you. And then, and then the, it says, alone in the dark, but now you've come alone. What? Alone, so you sitting in the house of your life by the window waiting for somebody to come sing you a song, dreams deep inside you, and you alone in the dark. In the dark. It's your house. You sitting in the dark. Listen, if you meet somebody and they have a light, you know what that means? That means they own the light bulb. And soon as you get on their nerves, and you're going to get on their nerves just like they're going to get on yours, that's called relationships. Soon as you get on his nerve, he brought the light, he going to unscrew his light bulb. Walk out. Now where are you? Back by the window. Dark. Waiting for somebody. Girl, you better get yourself. A Jesus is the light of the world. He already gave you all the light you need. Jesus is the light of the world. You need to let him light up your life. You need to live your life. Enjoy your life, have fun, feel, fulfill your dreams. You got to depart from fantasies that aren't working for you. You just got to realize some things are for them. And some of you got to depart some toxic relationships. You have a current relationship, whether it's a friendship or a romantic interest or what, but it's toxic, not working, not working properly, not working as God would ordain. And so you're going to have to get rid of some toxic relationships. I'm not telling you married people. You stuck with that. <laughs> Don't y'all get a false word. Oh, that was my word. <laughs> Go home, tell somebody who wouldn't even come to church. I had a word. Pastor had a word for me today. He said, you got to Go. No, 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 y'all. Blame that mess on me. Has somebody come up here looking for me? <laughs> Tell bro, man, I got armed security out there. Don't come for me. We will pop you in Jesus' name. <laughs> I've had it happen back in the back a couple decades ago. A brother came because a girl was living with. With, with her man, and she, and she heard the word and then got convicted one day. I said, you, you got to make this right, get married or move out. And, and I was told, I didn't know their situation, but she went home and told him, you got, th this is not going to work. And he said, who told you that? I said, my pastor. <laughs> he came the next Sunday, no lie, came the next Sunday, sat right on the front. 
This dude was buffed. This dude had pecs and stuff. And he sat right there and mean mugged me. No lie. The whole service. He told me later after he got saved, got his act together, he said, Pastor, I'm sorry. You, he said, I don't know if you remember. I said, sure, I remember. <laughs> Tell me, you don't know if I remember. I saw you and your mean mugging self sitting up there. He said, he said I, you know, I I'm, guess you wasn't quite sure. I said, no, I was telling myself while I'm conducting the service, if he rushed me, I'm going to get one good one in. <laughs> I was telling myself while he was looking I'm going to get one good one in. He going to know he met me one time. Now, he going to beat me down after that. <laughs> but that's all right. I'm going to get that one in. He will have a bloody nose or something else. I'm going to be going to the hospital. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something. He got saved, gloriously saved, later died of cancer. I visited him at the hospital, dying of cancer. He said, Pastor, I want to thank you for all that you've done in my life. It turned out wonderful, but that day, cuz had an agenda. <laughs> so I'm telling you all now, don't you go home and tell somebody, Pastor said you got to go. No, you handle your own business. You got a Bible. You know what you're supposed to do. Just do it. And don't put it on me. Put it on you. Amen, Amen somebody. But some of y'all got non-married people got toxic relationships. You got these folk who control you, who, who do that psychological thing on you and, and mind control. You got to free yourself from that. You got, some of y'all got witchcraft for friends. You say, now I'm not talking about necessarily potions, but just, witchcraft means you manipulate people to do what you want. And witches do it by, by means of their potions and what have you. But you can have somebody who's never done a seance in their life, but they practice witchcraft because they are all about manipulation. Some of y'all got manipulating people in your life, and you need to get rid of them. You need to send them packing because they're no good for you. Toxic people got to go. If they don't want to change, they got to go. That's the bottom line, and it's up to you. Don't ask somebody else to do it. You got to do it. And, and, they, and when you kick them out, they're going to be all mad. Some of them going to be like, oh, you, you ain't going to never be nothing without me. I was the best friend you ever had. Now you ain't going to have no friends. You only had me. I was your own one friend. Now you ain't. And let them talk. <laughs> Tell them in the great words of that, the, that, that theologian Beyonce, you must not know about me. <laughs> I can have another you in a minute. Matter of fact, they'll be here in a minute. To the left, everything you own. In the box, to the left. Oh, Beyonce will preach. Sometimes you got to let folk go. No, no, you're not going to control me. I got places to go. I got things. God, got a, there's a, God has a destiny for my life. And last time I looked at it, you weren't in it. Which means my destiny is not tied up in what you think about me. You can think of anything you want. Some of y'all got to get the gift of goodbye. I've had to have it over the years. When toxic people leave my life, I've gotten good at goodbye. Some of y'all need to do it. It's a gift. Ask God for it. Hold the door open for them. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Bye. I don't care how close you used to be. Don't you have people who used to be close to you? But you kept moving, you kept growing, you kept becoming all God wanted you to be, and it, it created distance. And next thing you know, you don't know where they are or what they're doing because they couldn't hang out. The Bible says, Amos says, how can two walk together unless they agree? Some folk don't walk with you because they don't agree that you're going somewhere. They don't like it. They want to control you. They want you to do what they want you to do. And you have to distance yourself from them. The departure principle, it's going to happen, let some things and let some people go. Finally, let me get out of here. Finally, there's not only the desire principle, not only the departure principle, there is the determination principle. You got to make up in your mind. Look at verses 5 and 6 of Joshua 1. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now look at verse 6. Be strong and courageous. 
That's the determination. You've got to be strong and courageous. When God tells you you got to be strong, you know what that means? That means you're going to see some stuff on your way to your destiny that's going to scare you half to death. When God says, come on now, be strong and courageous, he wouldn't say that if you were going to have a cakewalk into your destiny. He says, be strong and courageous because some stuff going to come against you that's going to scare you. But you have to say, I will not walk in fear. I'm going to walk in obedience and I'm going to walk in faith because the God who began a good work in me is going to bring it to completion. And he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's why you got to be strong because God is with you. It is his being on the journey that guarantees you the next level. It's the fact that God is going with you. You're not going by yourself. If you were going by yourself, then I wouldn't, I'd understand if you were oh, scared. But now you got to remind yourself who is with me. The greater one is with me. Greater is he that is with me than is he that is in the world. His presence makes all the difference. Jesus by himself is the greatest person ever walked the, the, the face of the earth. He's now with you in the spirit and he is going to get you to that place. Even in, uh, you need to understand Jesus did more in salvation than anybody else has ever done in human history. He did more in salvation than Freud did in psychoanalysis. He did more in salvation than Alexander the Great did in military conquest. He did more in salvation than Galileo did in astronomy. He did more in salvation than Paul Revere did in patriotism. He did more in salvation than Beethoven did in music. He did more in salvation than Rockefeller did in industry. He did more in salvation than Einstein did in physics. He did more in salvation than MLK Jr. did in civil rights. He did more in salvation than Webster did in lexicography. He did more in salvation than Gallup did in statistical journalism. Jesus did more in salvation than George Washington did in American history or Shakespeare did in poetry or Michelangelo did in artistry or Socrates did in philosophy or Lewis and Clark did in exploration or Du Bois did in education or Luther did in reformation or Lincoln did in emancipation or Spurgeon did in proclamation or Franklin did an experimentation or Columbus did in navigation or Ford did in transportation or Bell did in communication or the Wright brothers did in aviation. Jesus did it all by himself. He's in a class all by himself. He is the great I am. He's the one who was dead, but now he's alive. And forevermore, he will walk with you into your destiny. Be strong and courageous because God will see to it that you get to the next level. I'm done. Let's stand. You can go to the next level, but you're going to have to walk by three principles. You're going to have to sell, excel in the desire principle. You're going to have to really want to go. Excel in the departure principle. You've got to be willing to leave some things and some people behind. You've got to excel in the determination principle. I'm not going to let anything stop me. I will go to the place God has ordained for my life. Whether I'm talking about my spiritual life, my relationships, my finances, my physicality, my education, my vocation, my emotional health and well-being, every area of my life, I'm going to believe God to help me get to the next level. And if you are willing to go, if you're willing to depart from some things and some people, and if you're determined, you can go. Let's prepare to uh, pray with anyone who says, you know, the first step I need to take is to get things right spiritually. That means give the Lord your life. Why? Because he's the one who, who began a good work in you. 
I say that that work began by you being here. You ordained, whether you're with us virtually or in the room. You're here by God's appointment. You're here because we pray, Lord, bring the people into our sphere of influence that we can speak the word of life to. So you're not here by accident. Oh, somebody just told me about it. No, no, it was more than that. The Lord said, I want you here because I want to give you the opportunity to go to the next level. The next level starts with acknowledging Christ as your Savior. I want to uh, ask you to come, just step out from where you're standing and come to the front and face me because that'll let me know you're ready to go to the next level and it starts with my giving God my life. So I want to pray for those who need to accept Christ as your Savior. If that's you, I want you to step out from where you're standing and come meet me. Don't worry about people looking at you. There'll be more than this on Judgment Day. I need you to come make the right decision about your life. Secondly, I want to pray for those who are backslidden. That means you once asked the Lord in your life, but you haven't been walking with him. And he wants you to get it straight now. Thirdly, if you're spiritually unsure, say, well, Pastor, I wasn't raised in church. I really don't know about this spiritual stuff. But I do want to be right. Then let us pray with you because we'll, we'll walk with you and, and help you understand that God loves you and has a plan for your life. Finally, you're a believer and you want to make it official. I want to be part of the Destiny family, whether it's regional or global. I want to be part of the team. I want Pastor Paul to be my pastor, to speak the words of life into me, Pastor Kevin and others. I want to be part of this church. I want to be part of a life group. I want to grow with some other people. If you're in any of those categories and you're here in, in the sanctuary, come on and meet me here at this altar right now. I want to shake your hand and welcome you to the next level of what God wants to do in your life. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Stand right here for me. Somebody's going to come. One of my prayer team, come meet with her right now. That's right. Come right on. I need, I need to accept Christ. I need, I'm a backsider who needs to get right with the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm spiritually unsure. I want to be sure. Or I'm saved and I want to become part of the church family. Make that official. Come on, come on, come on. While the Lord is speaking to your heart, this is the time to make that quality decision. Again, desire has to be followed up. You can't just have a desire. You've got to have the next step. Next step. God bless you. God bless you. Amen come right on over here be part of these folks I need a prayer team member to come I need a prayer team member to come and join with her right now yes yes I need every one of them to have somebody to pray with yes thank you so much anybody else it's not too late not too late not too late not too late you're more important than football amen amen football is going to happen anyway but this is a, a destiny moment for you so let God have his way in your life. All right. Listen, if you're online, I want you to go into the prayer lobby. If you have a response in your heart for one of those invitations, I need to be saved. I'm spiritually unsure. I need to get sure. I'm a backsider who needs to come back to Christ. Or I'm a believer and I want to become part of the destiny family, whether it's regional or global. It's one church. We don't have two churches. We just have one group of folks. Some of them live near. Some of them live in other parts of the world. But we're all going to grow together as a church family and experience all that God has for us. Anybody else need to come? God bless you. All right, we're going to pray and uh, release you to the rest of your day and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you, Lord willing, next Sunday. Let's pray. Father, as we go from this place, we pray that you'll bless us, make us a blessing to others. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Please take your socializing out of this room so these people can be prayed for. These folks are going to be prayed for right in here. So do all of your greeting in the corridor and in the Barker Hall and in the lobby. God bless you.